Hello, everybody. Oh my goodness, <laughs> I can't talk. Hello, everybody, and welcome to a new video. Today, we're going to be doing something exciting, and we are going to be doing a DDR or Dance Dance Revolution inspired mini game. This one was inspired by this person here. You'll, they'll, you know, a little screen crap of their comment will pop up up there. And um, <laughs> this took a lot of figuring out uh, to, on how to do. And it is still a tiny little bit glitchy. And since I am recording this, obviously, while I do it, it um, might glitch a little. But I promise you, it works. But I'm also doing this on a, um, let's see. I got this one, two, three, like four year old laptop. So, you know, laptops are kind of built like crap. So we'll see. But anyways, without any further rambling, let's dive into the video. All right, so as always, let's jump right in. We are going to slowly jump in this time because this has a lot, and I mean a lot of stuff going on. So let me just show you how it works with one. I am hitting the left arrow key, by the way, to do this. You see up above it, there is a little thingy popping up showing different things. X, nope. Yellow, kind of, you know, I got pretty close, but didn't get it right on the mark. And then green, yay. You'll notice that the, uh, while the game system RPG Maker works on a grid system, the arrow doesn't have to fully be on the grid to make it work. So let me show you a fully functioning version of this. And then I'll break it down for you. And down, left, left up, left, down, left, down, up, left, up. Left, right, up, left, down, right, that was right, not left, you know what. Yeah, and I think you get the point. <laughs> so let's break it down, starting with the basic one. Okay, let's get us on this map so when I break stuff down. So these guys are, uh, these technically, I don't tech <laughs> Here, that's for simplicity's sake. Remove those, all right. So these are all the stuff that controls this, tells where it's at and everything. So actually, before we dive into that, let me, Pull up that too so you can see. All right, so you'll see that this guy right here is one. This is covered by an event. Two, three, and four. These are all how you tell what your score is. Four is you missed. Two is, oh, close enough, you'll still get a point. One is right on the mark, good job, you got it. And three is, uh oh, it's at the end, we need to go back to the beginning. So that is the start with some. This one, uh, it constantly is getting location info for this event and it's getting the region ID and applying it to a variable and it's just constantly doing that. You need to make sure that you have a wait frame in right here otherwise it'll just bog itself down and kill your frame rate because it'll constantly be going on top of itself. By adding the one second wait it does it does it instead of does it does it does it and when you have four of those going it will just kill you again add the weight. Um, the next one, I'll show you the end. So uh, if the location equals three, so this guy right here, then it turns eh on. That switch controls this, which perfect met and eh, which shows all the icons for these guys. Uh, then if your score is, I have it set so you can't go into negative numbers. 
So that's what I have here. So if your score is greater than zero, then remove one. Otherwise, it doesn't do anything. Waits five frames, turns it off, and then sets the event location back to the start. So back to right here. And then does the common event move speed L and then does away and jumps to the top. The common event that it has is all the way down here at the very bottom. And it literally it controls a very random variable, then it changes the speed. It's either four or three. You can have as many different speeds in here as you want. But uh, that is sorry, that is why this is more of a DDR inspired. Uh, you could have it do have these all set with a separate event doing specific move routes for each and every one of them. And at the end of this, I'll show you some special different special ones I have set up. But for this one, it's just randomized. Um, it's more of a quick time event, I suppose, than a DDR. But, you know, you could turn it into a DDR pretty easily. Anyways, uh, this is all of the stuff for your points wise. So if button left is being triggered, I find being triggered works better than pressed. It's, I don't know if it's just my computer, but it reads it better if it's triggered. Uh, if it equals two, when you press the left button, you get meh. So it turns meh on, gives you one point. Waste five frames, turns meh off, and then sets the event back to the beginning. Same thing happens here. Except for if it's four, you're hitting it too soon. So again, I have it set so it can't go in the negatives. So it subtracts one unless it's uh, zero or less, then it doesn't do anything. Wait five frames, turn it off. If it equals one, perfect on. Add two to your score, wait five, turn it off, send you back to the beginning. And so in this guy, it's literally each and every single one of these events is the same. It just changes the variable. So here, let me show you. I have a crap ton of different variables for this one. These are all the variables that I use for this. A special I'll show you at the end. Uh, but this is everything. DDR score is what everything gets added or subtracted to. And yeah. So for the one that has all of the events. It's just the same thing repeated over and over and over again for each and every single one. So on that note, you could add more of these in. It would just get harder and harder. Like you could start with just left and right and then add in up and down and everything. Uh, you'll see each of these goes a different speed every time I do it. You notice sometimes that the score arrow glitches out. Okay, you'll notice that whenever the right comes up, my keyboard isn't reading it very well. That is not a game issue. That is a keyboard issue. My go right key is a little broken, so I kind of have to spam it to get it to work. I promise this functions perfectly fine. My keyboard is just broken. So that's why I'm kind of just ignoring the right ones. <laughs> uh, but yeah. So let me show you some of my special fun things I did with it. That's uh, four and two. All right. So here we have just a normal one. I'm going to keep spamming through the normal ones until I get a special one. Boop and boop. Normal, normal, normal. Oh, that's an X. I don't hit anything. Yeah, it's good. Oh, that's another X. I don't hit anything. Next is going very slow. Got it. That's just a normal one. That's another X. Give me another green one, please, which is a double tap. One and two. So yeah, I have the green one, which is a double tap and the X, which means don't touch it at all. The cat just appears to show you where to jump. You could put like a jump, like an uh, up thing that bounces to let you know that you need to jump here. But uh, you'll notice I added new uh, region here. So uh, this guy's the same. This guy's the same. 
And this guy is the same. The only thing that you change is in this guy by adding L2 and L special, and you change the common event as well, but I'll get into that after that. So all you have to do is add in if uh, this, this is for the regular one, you add this to the regular one, which is also a fail, so it's just the same as what 4 is before. When L2, this is the jump one. Uh, I'll show you that one in a sec. This one's the don't touch one. It's really easy. It's if you, the button is hit at all while the don't touch one is going through, you lose, you lose a point. Um, the jump one gets a little complicated. All right, so first, if you're on seven, I just realized a flaw. No, yeah, I did it right. I did it right. All right, if you're on seven and you hit left, uh, the thing jumps, turns that on, you get point one. Not uh, if you are else, if you are not on uh, seven, then it just keeps going through. Uh, so you have, instead of getting two points at the end of this, you have two chances to get. Hold on a sec. Yeah. Oh. Oh my gosh. I was like, what the heck? There we go. There's my problem. They were miniature. Yeah. My eyesight sucks. But, you know, you could do that. You can hide them. So when you're working on code later down the line, it's a little bit easier. But anyways, the, these are all exactly the same. No, I just hit them. Um, and then it's just regular, like the first one for the rest of it. But this allows you to get, I believe, up to, yeah, two points total. It gives you two points for getting both the jumps. If you miss the first one, it's not a big deal. You just get one at the end instead of two. Uh, this, I forgot to mention, is just below character, direction, fix, and through. It's just for aesthetics. It doesn't actually do anything. Um... Oh yeah, in the common event, uh, this one, it while also changing the speed, it there is a ch one out of ten chance for each of these. Uh, so a special one, it turns uh, the no click one on, and a special two, it turns the double jump on. Else, it turns them both off, and you just go through like normal. So there is a one in ten chance for both of these. Uh, you could increase those odds, decrease them, whatever you like, but that is how I have it randomly. Well, as randomly as a computer can do, do it. But yeah, that is about it for DDR. Okay, I know it's more like... I had a comparison in my brain. It was there. It was in the forefront of my mind, and I have completely forgotten what it was. Oh, okay, this is going to be a niche reference. Uh, so, on the Wii, <laughs> aging myself there, on the Wii, uh, there was Family Game Night. And in one of the Family Game Nights, I think it was Family Game Night 3, uh, there is the Game of Life. And in that, for the wedding, you have to do a special mini game where you're hitting specific buttons when they're in a specific area. And the better you do, the more money the other players have to pay you. I am very competitive in that game. Um, but this reminds me more of that, I guess, than DDR. But it is the closest I could get to show, just freely show all the different me mechanics. But as I said, instead of having all of these on a move right uh, move route, you could have a thing that goes through and controls every single move route looping through. Uh, you would just have to have two different events. Like, you'd have to have two lefts, and the first left would go, and then if you miss, it would bring it back, and the second left would go, it would miss and bring it back. And you'd just have to continuously move that, and you'd have to have a bunch of if-then, like, if fail, send to beginning, or uh, then succeed. It would, once it hits the end, it would send it back anyway, so it doesn't matter for succeed. Uh, but, yeah, it would get a lot more Cody, I guess. So here, I can just show you how that would work. So. 
Let me actually, before I do that, just because I don't want to break what I already have going, right? Okay, so we have, this will be parallel. Don't forget to do the parallel. I forgot that so many times when setting up this. All right, so we want control, move vert, um, uh, left A. Boop, 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 boop. That's way too many, I think. Right, okay. So you have this. Okay. So, in order... Let's see. Let me try something. This is... Oh, goodness, new. Um, conditional branch, button. We're going with page up because it's different than left and I don't feel like turning off all the other events. Okay, let's see if this stops it. Oh, hold on. Eh, not that button. Okay, now let's try this. Okay, it doesn't. Interesting to know. Okay, so instead, what you would want to do... Let's have it set on repeat movements. And then let's try this. This is something I've never actually figured out how to do. So let's see if we can figure out how to do this together. I think it's because I have it set on parallel and stuff. You would want this auto run. You would not. OK, yeah, you would want this to be on auto run, not parallel. The amount this is lagging is concerned. No? Uh, hold. And then let's erase it. Let's see what happens there. Well, you know, it kind of worked. Uh, that was my problem. Okay. Now let's try that again. Okay, the issue with the auto run is it moves through it too fast. So I need... Hold on a sec. Okay. <sighs> Ignore that. That was something I'd open on my phone. Um, how to stop an event from moving RPG Maker. When all else fails, turn to Google. Uh, no, that's not what I want. Okay. I'm going to move it for wondering. You. I don't want to plug in. No, not that. Okay. No one else has figured it out without a plug-in either. I don't think it's possible. Okay, so we'll have to try and do this another way. Uh, 
Um, you know what, actually? Yeah, that, that actually works. Oh, dang it. Okay. Then just nothing. Okay, right? And then you would be... And that stays the same, right? Yeah, okay. Okay, I figured out what you'd have to do. Okay, this is the auto runner, right? Um, you would have to... have a series of events changing the wait times in between them. Okay, yeah, that's how you would do it. I figured it out. Yay, okay. Um, you would just need to have, not you, you. Then I need to turn switches. Left A, off. Okay, I need to have two events going for me to show how this works. So let's just go in here and let's do right two. Actually, no, my right key is broken. Don't do that. And then this guy. And then. All right, and. All right. And this wait more than 10, so you can actually physically see this. Then we're just gonna erase the event because this is just to show you how you would want to do it. Um, no. Control switches. Don't A. And I want to go in here and add this in here. And then I want to, because I'm lazy, copy it from here. And then paste it in here. Okay, so this should work now. Yay! Yeah, ignore that. Um, <laughs> um, you would have to get timing down for this one. Which would be a, you know, big pain in the behoot. I have this, don't I? Oh. I figured out my issue. Okay, now this show... And this is, I guess, more of a proof of concept than the final game, but, you know. And then they vanish. Okay, yeah. You would just have to get the timing down and have the weights in between each of them being what you wanted. And that's why if you wanted to go boom, 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 you would need multiple left events that you would just switch in here. So let me show you here. It's actually copy paste because that's easier. Uh, let's make this left. It's like I had this planned all along. Left underscore. All right. And then. Yeah, then you just need a coffee. All of these.
you don't actually need to change this because they're going to be running along the same track. So you literally just have to make sure. No, actually, yeah, this is the only thing you'd have to change. Okay, but anyways, I think I could actually run it like this. It might glitch a little tiny bit, but you know what? Okay. You can have events stacked up on top of each other. It's just, um, you can't do it in the default. Like, it, you can't sit these on top of each other. So you just have to have them on through and just manually do it once the game starts. But anyways. Okay. See, there were two lefts going at the same time. So that's just how you would do that. It didn't work function properly because I didn't set up these two events for it. But you saw the process of it moving through. So that's why you would want to have multiple backup ones if you wanted to really get it like DDR. But anyways, that is how you would do that. Um, thank you all so much for sticking with me. I know especially when I do stuff on screen, it gets a little um, lengthy. But yeah, I hope you all found this helpful. And, and hope you all enjoy the rest of your day. Bye!